Welcome to the Diz Explorers Podcast, where each week we explore different avenues of the great Disney empire that has been bestowed upon us. <laughs> so this week we are at episode number 24. We hope everybody had a safe and fun Halloween, filled up those candy bags, and everybody's kids had a great time dressing up, and also the adults that dressed up. Uh, I kind of mailed it in this year. I just roamed around with a pirate hat and a Pirates of the Caribbean t-shirt just because there was family stuff going on that kind of threw a wrench and everything. I didn't get to uh, go full pirate regalia as I generally like to do on, on Halloween. So, But anyway, the kids had a good time, and uh, that's all that really matters. So this week, Milford's going to uh, give us a recap of of his recent trip to Walt Disney World, which we got to hear some some of him live a couple episodes ago when he jumped on with us for a while as he was sitting in his resort, which was really, really cool. All hail technology for being able to do that. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's hear what Milford's got to say about his trip. Well, I'd have to say the trip was actually very nice. We left Friday the 14th. About three in the afternoon, and uh, my wife and I typically drive to Florida, so it's a you know fifteen and a half to sixteen hour trek. Uh, this trip was unique in that we had her eighty eight year old mother with us as well. So we drove to Florida. We got there Saturday morning, the fifteenth, about eight thirty. Checked in at Old Key West, and I'll have to say that being a DVC member. We all know that our check-in time is not till 4 o'clock. That's what they say. The many times I've stayed there, never had a problem getting a room early. Well, apparently, the entire East Coast was staying at Disney World that week <laughs> and checked out on Saturday. Oh, no. Because it was, you know, they had told us that it was, they were turning over 75% of the resort that Saturday morning. So... Needless to say, we didn't get our room when we got there, so everybody was kind of frustrated in that my sister-in-law and their kids, which flew down, the room wasn't wet, which wasn't a big deal for them because, you know, they at least had showered that morning before they got on a plane. <laughs> we hadn't showered all night, so <laughs> I did my typical trick, and if anybody wants some tips on this, you know, they have a perfectly good restroom complete with showers next to the pool and i typically go use that shower clean up they have shampoo and everything in there where you can clean up change clothes shave whatever and go hit the parks of course now you also have to understand i hadn't slept all night either you know just occasional <laughs> nodding off in the car so i uh spent about 37 hours with no sleep <laughs> or very little sleep but it's disney world you know, that's my energy for that. So, so you know, our problem really didn't stop there, though, because typically they have our room to us by 4 o'clock. It was almost 5.30 before they text us and told us our room was ready, which is very sad. But uh, we've already uh, contacted DVC and let them know that we're not very happy with it. The other problem we had was the kids had problems with their magic bands not opening the door on Sunday because we learned another little trick with magic bands this is one for everybody to put in their hat and keep it when they go on trips make sure everybody uses their magic band the first day you check in yeah apparently there's a security procedure that if you haven't used your magic band on the door at midnight it disables it Oh. Yeah, that that I remember them explaining to us wow. when when I've been with our kids. They they've told us that at least if it's a knowledgeable person at the front desk and they should know that that when you go to the room have everybody tap their magic band on the door and they never told us why. I didn't know about the disablement, but I did know that 
I've been told that on multiple trips that when you go, everybody, you know, tap the door key, and it'll it'll activate everything and make everything smooth sailing. Yeah. So I that had was no idea. That's that awesome. was a little frustrating. So there's a tip for everybody. So as you guys all know, I'm a travel agent. So I had purchased travel agent, what they call travel agent tickets. Um, so uh, everything on the travel agent site said you can re you could get these tickets at the concierge desk at old key West. So I went to concierge desk at old key West and they kind of fiddled and farted with it for about 25 minutes on Saturday morning. I'm sorry, sir. We can't do this. Okay. It's a will call number. You know, you guys should be able to print these. But we can't do it. They told me I needed to go to Epcot. Knowing that Epcot was going to be a complete and utter zoo Saturday because of White and Food Festival, I chose to go to Disney Springs. I got to Disney Springs, and they told me they couldn't do it either, that I'd have to go to a, a ticket booth at Epcot. And that, and I think they were steering me that direction because I had somehow probably told them that that's where I was going that day. So I get to Epcot, and sure enough, the ticket booths at Epcot are three miles long. I mean, it's at least an hour and a half wait to get in and get tickets. Wow. It's already, it's already 2 o'clock at this point. Oh, man. So I decided, okay, I'm going to hop the monorail and go to the Ticket and Transportation Center. Sure enough, get to the Ticket and Transportation Center. There's maybe five people in line. So I get in line, walk up, and she's like, I'm not sure what I need to do this, but let me call somebody. Oh, man. But she called somebody, and they walked her through it. Bam, bam, I had my tickets. All good. So I don't know what the whole deal there is. I've talked to a couple of my cast member friends that work at other resorts, and they all tell me basically concierge at Old Key West is just horrible. So I'm going to uh, – I've also included that in my DVC notes that I sent to DVC, so – the only other bad thing that happened was we had a, we were there on Monday and Sean and I and her mom decided to hang out in the hotel room for a little bit Monday morning and a guy come to PM the room while we're checked into it. And I'm like, you know, I, you know, I do PMs and stuff working at Chrysler. I have work with the guys on the floor doing some of that scheduling. It's like, you know, you could schedule that when people check out. It just seemed kind of funny to me. So anyway, that's the end of my rant. <laughs> Everything else is good from here. So Saturday, once I finally got to the park, uh, I spent the afternoon with my friends from Miami, and we partook in some of the Epcot Wine and Food Festival. And I have to say, the Wine and Food Festival was awesome this year. I know, Melanie, you were there a little bit before we were there and uh, you got to do some of that, didn't you? My plans that day ended up changing. So unfortunately oh. my time in world sh- in world showcase was next. Mm. So I have to live vicariously through everyone else this mm. year. She ate too much Mac and cheese at the Mac and cheese bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Mac and cheese. Well, that spoiled me for all other food on that trip, but no, no, my plans had taken an abrupt change for that day, and that's mm-hmm. part for the course. For the <laughs> when you're there on business, you know you're not always master of your own schedule. Yeah. So things changed, yeah. and I only got to spend a little over an hour or two in um, Future World. So at least I got to see the new store around the world. But no, I did not get to experience all the new awesome things that I had planned to at the Food and Wine Festival. Well, I started out on the promenade, and the first place that I ran into was the Farm Fresh booth. And since you mentioned Mac and Cheese Bar, they had loaded mac and cheese with Nooski's pepper bacon, cheddar cheese, and peppers and green onions. And oh my God, was it fantastic! <laughs> it I don't, I don't know good. that I've had any better mac and cheese than that. Um, definitely good. Um, so that day I got through the Farm Fresh. 
I did the craft beers because I have to have my craft beer. <laughs> uh, so I did it that day along with the piggy wings. They're fried pork wings with Korean barbecue sauce and sesame seeds. They were actually pretty good and weren't real spicy. Sean actually tried them on a with me on a trip back on Tuesday, and she actually her and her mom both liked them. So I that day I also got through. I'm looking at my past. I'm following along in mine too. Put this in <laughs> a quarter. You know, I got through Australia and New Zealand because they were right. Would you have close. there? Australia, I had the. What was that um, the lamb chop or the uh, sh- yeah, uh, no that was New Zealand right? no New Zealand I had the I had the lamb, it was the lamb chop, right? New Zealand had the lamb meatballs with the spicy tomato chutney that was real good yeah. yeah I had the lamb chop and then I had the meatballs in New Zealand okay which was really good yeah as well. definitely and of course I had the beer that they had there which was pretty tasty as well I'm trying to think where we went from there we went to Mexico what did I have in Mexico? Where's my little thing that tells me what I had in Mexico? <laughs> I had the tacos. Okay. Uh, the shrimp tacos. Those were pretty tasty as well. And then from there, that was pretty much the end of our stuff at Epcot because it was getting late at that point. And my friends from Miami, that uh, she had her mom with her, and they wanted to go see the fireworks at Hollywood Studios. So they had their car at Epcot. So I actually just kind of rode with them or they actually they had parked at beach club or sorry beach club boardwalk so we walked to boardwalk and uh took their car and went to hollywood studios got there in time to see the fireworks so for those of you that don't know the fireworks show at hollywood studios is called star wars a galactic spectacular and when it starts on time it is spectacular <laughs> Uh, apparently it's got a lot of technology <laughs> behind it and they kept delaying it. They kept saying, you know, in five more minutes and then they'd come across and say, we're sorry, but this performance of blah, blah, blah has been delayed. We really expect them to just say canceled, uh, cause we've been there too many times when that's happened too. Mm-hmm. But finally about 12 minutes after eight, they got the fireworks off pretty amazing uh i don't know if any of you caught the stream i put out but uh i w- i actually streamed that fireworks show on uh periscope excuse me i scoped that <laughs> fireworks show on periscope. so that was pretty cool but obviously they had problems with technology because they're supposed to be at the end of it luke puts his hand up and there's supposed to be a lightsaber a light shoot out of the top of the building and that light didn't shoot out uh... they have these they have these pretty amazing flamethrowers that throw flame up off the top of the building. And I mean, it throws it, it looks to me like 50 or 60 feet in the air and you can feel them standing out there on the, on the street. Oh, no, def- so, no doubt. That was pretty cool. Yeah. That was pretty neat. That. And when that, and when the, uh, when the emperor, when the emperor's throwing the lightning and it, and the trees to the right and the left are, you know, flickering like lightning and, yeah, Vader's breathing, and and the trees are like the lights are fading on and off, like he's breathing way out there. Yeah, the the, the special effects were insane. Yeah. yeah. So the technology they're using for this is similar to what they use on the castle at Magic Kingdom. Um, so they've built these two gigantic towers on either side of the street there. Just basically, once you get close to where the hat used to be, so these point at. They actually added structure. My friend Shane was telling us that they added structure to two of the buildings on the left and the right of the theater, uh, the Chinese theater, because they needed a good surface to project on. So Right. And uh, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam is starting up next week. So Yes, it is. Jingle Bam. I, I can, <laughs> Jingle Bam. <laughs> And I just saw today you can download a Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam inspired wallpaper. Yes, I saw that too, yeah. From the the, uh, Disney Parks blog. Yep. That is taking over. So I'm glad you guys got to see that. Yeah. So Is is it coming back after the holidays? It is coming back after the holidays. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And then they have these lasers that shoot all over the place. So 
you know, tracking down some of the technology was kind of cool because I went back the next day on Sunday and spent a couple hours there. And you are a lighting guy. <laughs> I am a lighting guy, so you know I like to scope these things out and and see, you know, how how did they do that, you know? But it was pretty cool. So on Monday, oh, I'm sorry, Sunday night. So the big thing for Sunday night or Sunday day, we spent. Uh, I spent some time at Hollywood Studios. It was kind of a me going around and catching up on some things that I hadn't done in a couple trips. So. I did Rock and Roller Coaster, which I love. I did uh, the movie ride. I did Star Tours. I actually got to do Midway Mania. I stood in the line for the standby line because now they have three tracks and the line was short. Yeah, it's. I mean, it was thirty minutes. Yeah, it's not bad. I was in. That was insane. And then I went and hung out at the launch bay for a little while. So that was kind of cool too. But Sunday night, the big thing was, is uh, a friend of mine who's a cast member had bought me a ticket for Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios. And I'm not going to go into great detail about it, but basically the difference is, is that Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is for kids. Halloween Horror Nights is definitely not for kids. <laughs> we got through... We just did the general admission ticket, so we didn't get through all the haunted houses, but we did get to do the American Horror Story haunted house, the Exorcist haunted house, the Halloween haunted house, and then some Western Gulch thing that was cowboys and stuff that was really weird, <laughs> and, and the Walking Dead house, so pretty neat. And as a bonus... They actually had Diagon Alley open. So I actually got to go Ooh. walk through Diagon Alley and got to ride Escape from Gringotts. And oh my God, if you've not ridden that ride, you got to go ride that ride. It is way cool. It's very so, fun. Yeah. So basically, they took the ride vehicle from the mummy and the ride vehicle from, I'm going to say, Spider Man or Transformers because it's basically the same apparatus. And put them together and added all this 3D video screens. And I, I would just say, it's amazing. I, I was really impressed. So so we hung out there until about 1 o'clock in the morning until we both decided we were dead. And he had to be back and work to work at Saratoga Springs at uh, 6 o'clock that next morning. So... Uh, he dropped me back off at the resort, and he went home, and uh, we called it a day. That was pretty cool. I'll at some point, maybe next year when we get close to Halloween, I'll do a a segment on the differences between the two parties because it's after Halloween now. Nobody. Cares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think we've Halloweened everybody out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's all I'm going to say about Halloween Horror Nights. So I did buy a shirt. So. <laughs> Uh, I, I had to have a shirt. I've been to the thing four times now and didn't buy a shirt. So now I can say I actually have a shirt. Merchandising, merchandising. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Monday, got up, and we, we kind of bummed around in the room for a little bit. Uh, and I headed Monday back to Epcot to do some more wine and food festival stuff. And pretty much worked my way through Italy and... These are not in order on this sheet. I don't know why. <laughs> um, worked my way through Italy and China. China, I had the uh, Beijing roasted duck in the steamed bun. Normally, they have a beef in that steamed bun, but the roasted duck was really good. I was really surprised at the uh, how good that was. From there, we went to... I'm trying to put this in order, <laughs> and it's not being in order. Of course, we did Norway. Oh, and the thing I forgot to mention to everybody was on Saturday, I missed the biggest thing. I got to go on both Soren and Frozen. Nice. Similar to my problems, my buddy Wally, they had had problems with their room, and the resort actually gave them free fast passes because they spent so much time trying to get their problem fixed. Oh, wow. 
So nice. he just kept handing his badge off to us so we could go ride stuff. Cool. <laughs> so I got to go on Soren, and we did theater number three, the new one. Nice. Concourse three. And we got to go on the uh, Frozen ride, which I thought was fantastic. Yeah, it's really well done. I'm just amazed at the anim- animatronic, well, the video and animatronics in there. So, yep, definitely. Sorry, I had to step back and do that. <laughs> so then part of my plan for Monday was that Dennis DeYoung was supposed to play at the Eat to Beat concerts that night. And I didn't pay any attention coming into the park because they usually have a sign out front that says who's playing that night. And uh, so I get back there and I'm like, wait a minute. They still have Tiffany on these signs. Did they not change it yet? (laughs) And I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute. My buddies aren't going to be here. That's not good. So come to find out, uh, Dennis DeYoung had played a concert in Naples on Sunday night with the symphony in Naples and completely blew his voice out. So they extended Tiffany for two more nights because Dennis DeYoung didn't play till Wednesday. Needless to say, I did not go to the Tiffany concert because, <laughs> you know, she, she had like what one hit. I, in the 80s? I think so. In the 90s? I think we're alone now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And That's it, the song. It wasn't even her song. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't now, even her song. You're only in my dreams. What, you weren't a tween in the late 80s? I was. Uh, I think there were two songs. But I was not a fan of her. I was out of high school at that point. Uh, so, I decided that uh, I would go ahead and try and get through some more of Wine and Food Festival and do some other things. So from that, I actually took off and went to Disney Springs and spent some time kind of roaming around Disney Springs. Once I found out that Tiffany was playing and I didn't want to be any part of that. (laughs) Uh, So you guys saw my, I think you guys saw my video from the, from the Coca-Cola store there at Disney Springs. I went and roamed around the first floor. First floor of the store is pretty much all clothing. So it's t-shirts and hats and you know all that stuff so the way this building is built it's a brick building but then they wrapped it with a glass wall all the way around it so there's a cement walkway that walks at an angle all the way around the building kind of like a ramp to take you to the second floor or you can take the elevator so i walk the ramp up to the second floor and if i can figure out how to extract the video out of facebook I'll extract it and try and post it someplace else where somebody can watch it. So when you get up to the second floor, it's all houseware stuff. So I made the comment that you know, the guy that owns Mr. Happy Burger in Logansport, Indiana, would go nuts in there because he outfits his store with all this Coca-Cola memorabilia. And that's what it was. It's salt and pepper shakers. It's little uh, matchbox cars. It's all that stuff that they used to sell that was collectible from Coca-Cola. But the coolest thing was, was the guy said, Hey, you want to get a picture with the bear? (laughs) Like, okay, sure. I'll go get a picture with the bear. So I walk up this ramp and around the corner and there's a guy with a camera and this wall. And it's got this fog coming out of the ceiling. I'm like, okay, this is weird. So the lights flicker and, and you can't see the wall open up behind the fog, but out of the fog comes this giant Coca-Cola polar bear. (laughs) And I mean, this thing stands two feet taller than I am. (laughs) So I got a picture with it. Sadly, they lost my picture. I went to go have them printed out. I'm like, ah, so I got to extract that out of my video, too, because I want to post that picture. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool. That's, yeah. So um, so I walked out of there, kind of roamed around, and and, and got, uh, you know, got a lay of the land and what all was in there. They pretty much, they had those little eight-ounce Coke bottles from, like, every country that you could buy with Coke in them, um, which I thought was kind of cool. So I decided, okay, I'm going to go up and check out this patio on top because they've got a covered patio on the top floor. So you walk out, go up the ramp, and go around the building on this ramp and get up to the bar. And so I walk up to the bar, and you know how they have, when you go to a microbrewery, you can get beer flights? Mm -hmm. 
you could get a 16 flight soda flight. Oh my god. That's a lot of so soda. They gave, yes. you, they gave you a little Dixie cup of every soda that they make. And Beverly? includes the Beverly, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was only U.S. stuff. Uh, oh. Yeah, so, so it was like Coke and Cherry Coke and Vanilla Coke and... You know, because now they have freestyle, they can do all kinds of stuff, oh, right? Yep. Right. So I got up there and I'm like, well, I don't want soda. So then they tell me, well, you can do a float flight. So they give you eight little bit bigger cups with soda in it and a scoop of ice cream in it. No, I need something better than that. Well, then I find out they have a full bar. There you go. That's what I was waiting for. Where's the Jack Daniels? <laughs> <laughs> so it's all made with Coca-Cola products, and I had, I had this thing with whiskey and these weird cherries floating in it that had been soaked in something. I don't know what it was. I and I, I meant to write it down, and I didn't get it. But I think I did post a couple pictures of them um, on my Facebook. If not, I will post them, and I'll try and go back through and figure out what it was I had. I thought I saved the receipts, and I didn't. I'm I'm a horrible blogger. <laughs> <laughs> so disappointing. So I did take a panoramic shot from up there and posted it on Facebook. And the view up there is pretty amazing because you can see all of Disney Springs. Sadly, it's right next to the Planet Hollywood that's being redone. So you get to see all that construction going on. But um, And I hear that's supposed to open next month. So plant, the new plant Hollywood construction at Walt Disney World. No, I've never seen. Yeah, I've I'm never sure. seen that before. They hide it so well. Those fancy walls. <laughs> so I went from there and decided that uh, I needed my, I needed more of a sugar fix. So I went to the uh, Amaretz Patisserie, which is the uh, the little cake shop there next to World of Disney. So I got my little my little cake and a couple other things and took back to the room. A couple little eclairs. They had a salted caramel eclair and a lemon meringue eclair. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. If you've not been in the place, it's pretty amazing because you can walk in and they, they you see them making all this stuff and it's and decorating these little cakes. These little cakes are like they're covered with fondant. So if you guys know what fondant is, that's basically like a sugar, sugary kind of pasty thing that they, some people put on wedding cake. Yep. But they cover it. It's it's a it's two pieces of cake. It's a layered cake with buttercream icing in it and usually some other flavors in there. <clears throat> this one had like a lemon tea jelly mixed on one level, uh, and then a buttercream icing that I can't remember what flavor it was. I think it was just buttercream. And then covered, and then it's decorated. So it looks like a miniature little wedding cake is what it looks like. Hmm. But my uh, wife and her mom had been there the day before, and my wife knows better. She needs to bring me stuff from there. They, they left me out, so that's why I went back Monday. <laughs> that pretty much ends Monday. So on... Tuesday, we spent some more time at Epcot. I actually roamed around with my wife for a change. Because she was, you know, entertaining her mom and, and getting her around places. So, her mom actually went to the parks with us. 80 year, 88 years old. Hasn't been in Disney World since 1982. Wow. So, needless to say, some things had changed since she'd been there. Uh, actually, 1983, because they had been to Epcot oh. back in those days. So we got her on Spaceship Earth. So she got to go up in that. She thought that was pretty cool. And she she rode with my wife. So they did the little thing with the, you know, picking your language and then picking your, how you wanted to live and your vacation and things like that. So she thought that was pretty cool. She amazingly got on and off the ride very well. Because you know how that can be a little challenging and for an 88 year old that doesn't walk very well really challenging but she did very well with that and the 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 cast members were very accommodating and helping out with getting her on and off the ride so good so we bummed around some more at epcot we went back over to the microbrew building that day 
and that's when we had I had the second flight, which I split with my wife, and we had the piggy wings again, so her mom could try them, and so Sean could try them, and then we proceeded on our way back around World Showcase again, and we went the other direction, so we went from Canada around backwards. So. We went backwards, so... That is backwards. I'm glad somebody yep. else said that. Yep. So we got in uh, Greece, so I had the chicken gyro, chicken gyro there. Hero. Um, gyro, gyro. <laughs> I had the seafood fisher- fisherman's pie at Ireland. Yeah, that was good. I had that, too. Which was really yeah. good. Where's my Canada? Where's my Canada? <laughs> It was either the soup or the My wife filet. had the Canadian soup. I had the filet. Yeah. Because filet is always amazing there. Then we went to Morocco. Or no, I'm sorry. Not Morocco. England. Can't find it on here. I don't know that United Kingdom had its... Why is it not? They didn't have it. They didn't anything. have anything, That's right. no. Because they had Ireland. It was Scotland. They had Ireland That's and what... Scotland. Yeah. So I had the Scottish lamb stew, which was delicious. That was very good. I had that too. <laughs> yeah. And then we went to Morocco. And Morocco, I had the kefta pocket, which is a, it's a, basically a pita pocket with ground seasoned beef in it. Mm. But the seasoning is amazing. Yeah, I should have got that. I got the other thing, the hummus fries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't do that because I. It wasn't very good. Sometimes you get hummus out. We can do a lot of hummus around uh, here. See, I don't. And, yeah, it wasn't good. So, <laughs> we got to France. And, of course, my wife had to have her escargot. And I had the the braised short ribs, which was pretty tasty. Morocco, Morocco. What's that from Morocco? Japan, right? Yeah. I had the spicy hand roll, which is tuna and salmon uh, with volcano sauce, mm-hmm. which was pretty tasty. And then, you know what? I didn't have anything in America. You didn't miss anything. <laughs> you really didn't. Because, the brisket was because, terrible. honestly, none of it looked good. It wasn't. The brisket was terrible. Yeah. And the beer choices were terrible, too. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And then we went to Germany. No, Germany. Italy. Am I not horrible or what? I can't remember which countries. Then. Yeah, Italy. It's, yep. It's because Italy. you're going backwards. You're going backwards. It's because I'm going backwards. <laughs> yeah, it, so I had the, I had the Panetta... Oh, Parmigiano at Italy, which is baked ziti and chicken Parmesan. Yep, that was good. Which was good. Yep. And then Germany, which is the... Oh, I didn't have anything. Oh, yeah, I did. I had the schnicken noodle. <laughs> which is pasta gratin with ham and cheese. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty tasty. And I think that's all we did that day. Because we wanted to do a couple other things and I wanted to go back to Hollywood studios. So I went back to Hollywood studios and wrote a few more things and met up with another blogger friend. Uh, so we bummed around there and talked for about an hour, how the blogging business is going. (laughs) Um, what hers is going extremely well. She gets paid to go do trips all over the place. That's not bad. uh, I can only wish to be like her. (laughs) And if she listens to this, she's know I'm. She knows I'm. I'm talking about her. So, <laughs> so that night we were going to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Yay! And I went and didn't dress up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either this year. So my uh, niece went in a, went as Katniss. Oh. And she's like nine, so she went as Katniss, and they actually let her in with her bow. And, and her suction cup arrows. Oh, nice. <laughs> Which I thought was cool. Yeah, definitely. Sean's sister Sam dressed up, and both the other kids dressed up, but it escapes me what they wore. I can't remember. Because we didn't get to the party at the same time. So I went to the party early. I got there and basically used my day pass to go ahead and go into the park at like 2.30 because I wanted to go in and periscope the festival of fantasy parade so i went and did that from Frontierland. some of you may have saw that i don't know i did that one on facebook live i think this was three weeks ago so my memory is a little <laughs> short so i got the parade done and then walked back to the front of the park because by that time 
it was about four o'clock and they started handing out wrist bracelets. So I went back up and got my bracelet. And as I was coming back into the park from the main entrance, they're kind of pushing all of the people that are coming to the party off to the right. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, that's weird. So there's a, there's a, like a gate between Tony's and the candy shop. That gate was open and they were sending people backstage to go around to tomorrow to the walkway there to Tomorrowland, the back way by the plaza. Mm -hmm. So they've redone all that space back there. It's almost like a regular, it's almost like, I mean, it's paved and, and decorated up and the landscapings like it's main street. And they have those bronze statues of the fab five in their costumes. If you've ever seen those that light up at night, yep. I took pictures of some of them. Yeah, I did too. And then that was your first candy stop. So they gave you your trick or treat bag and, and candy, mm -hmm. uh, first thing of candy, which I promptly ate. I was <laughs> <laughs> but it was some weird, uh, like granola bar. And I think it was a Reese's cup and something else, but that was it. That was the only Reese's cup I got the whole night. So no Reese's cups anywhere else. <laughs> so I walked out kind of bummed around the park. Went and did Space Mountain, went and did Haunted Mansion, went and did Pirates, Jungle Cruise, just kind of walked around and did stuff. So I went back to the front of the, back to the hub and basically copped a squat so that I could get the first Hocus Pocus show, <laughs> which I recorded, which was awesome. I love that show. If you haven't seen it, you got to go to a Halloween party so you can see the Hocus Pocus show. Did that, then promptly went back, and I wanted to do Jungle Cruise again because now it was dark out, and I haven't been on Jungle Cruise in the dark in a very long time. So <laughs> it's fun. I actually attempted to periscope it, but it didn't come out very well. No, you could see the, you could see the boat driver and hear her, but that was about it. Even when they turned the boat lights on out into the out into the jungle area you couldn't see anything hardly so that was kind of a waste <laughs> and then i also lost connection once we got back in the ride i don't know why so i walked back around to the front of the park so that i could get the the video the castle video show celebrate the magic because i wanted to see it one last time because that's going away as well uh, i think that actually it is the new one started it started today no a couple days yeah. ago a couple days yeah because i watched okay. uh I watched a periscope of it from somebody. Yeah, if you, yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I guess it's or cool. some of it. I didn't watch the whole thing, but yeah, I think it's it was either yesterday or the day before it started. Yeah, so I got to do that, and then I walked back. And the funny thing is, is I'm looking at my periscope, and this lady that I follow on periscope was actually scoping for Main Street. So I actually figured out where she was standing and went and stood next to her until she got done scoping. And I'm like, hi, I just want to let you know I'm one of your followers. <laughs> and she's like, that's cool. Nobody's ever actually come up and walked up to her at a park and said hi. So so that was kind of cool. And then we both stood there and scoped the fireworks show, the hollow wishes. So I didn't do the first parade, so I went back to... Frontier Land, basically the same spot where I did the Festival of Fantasy Parade and did a really bad attempt at trying to periscope that, but I did get some I did get some pictures which I think I posted up on Facebook and I'll I'll uh, put those out. I'll try and get those put out so that we can put them up on the blog site. So the next day, spent more this was Wednesday now. Spent pretty much the whole day at Epcot. And we, that was our last night. So I went and had dinner with the family. The only time I had dinner with them the whole trip. And they went to some of my favorite places, but I had other things I wanted to accomplish. So, uh, we ate at La Cellier that night. I love La Cellier, which for most, most of you know, La Cellier is the restaurant in Canada mm -hmm. down in the cave. It was awesome as it always is. I actually ended up with the ribeye, and it was perfect. So my family ate at some other places while 
we were there. They did uh, California Grill, I believe, on Sunday night while I was at Halloween Horror Nights. That was a bummer because California Grill I really liked. But, again, I had my own hidden agenda. So they also did the Garden Grill at The Land. They haven't done that in a while. They actually said the food was actually really good. And I don't have any in details on what they had. but And then they had eaten Saturday night at Raglan Road the day we got there. so Which I did not go to either because I wanted to do fireworks at Hollywood Studios. <laughs> so. so we got up Thursday morning and got my sister checked in and her kids checked in for airline flights. And that's a pretty amazing process if you've never done that because you can check your bags right at the resort. They take your and swoop your bags off and print your boarding passes, and you can basically go right through security once you get to the airport, which is pretty cool. We loaded up the car, and we were on the road by about 9 o'clock, and we rolled back in Friday morning about 3 in the morning. So that pretty well sums up the trip. I do have to give a couple shout-outs to a couple cast members at uh, the parks. Julie and Tabitha at the uh, launch bay because I'd actually gone into there showing them my second phone case that I've had for my iPhone that just has completely fallen apart. I've had two of those fall apart in a year and Tabitha had actually gone back to get a manager and they came out and said, you know what? We're going to replace your phone case. So they replaced my phone case for free. Nice. Which I thought was awesome. And they upgraded me to the new case, which is, way better than the old case it's a it's got thicker bumpers around the outside and it's actually designed to come apart what's that the uh, um, now is that the DTEC cases or or just the yes yeah it's the DTEC cases that they print oh, okay okay i i, I was very well, close to that, getting one of those this time the new ones are awesome okay the old one the old one everything's put together uh, so that plate plate in the back right on the old ones wasn't designed to come out of uh, it. okay these new ones, it actually snaps out by design. Gotcha. So that they, I think they realized that they had a design flaw and fixed it. At least that's what she had explained to me. I got to visit with a friend of mine, Kyle Orth, who's a DVC ASA at for DVC. I went and visited him, with him for a little bit at Hollywood Studios, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've been friends for some time because he used to do ASA stuff on the cruises, and that's how we know him. And then, of course, my friend Shane McLaughlin, he works at uh, Saratoga Springs. And Shane and I were, at, Shane was who actually uh, went with me to Halloween Horror Nights on Sunday night. So so I didn't mention Wednesday night. Last night, we did get to take in, I did get to take in the Dennis DeYoung concert. Uh, and I posted that video up on the internet and all the pictures I took. I think you guys saw the pictures I took. Yeah. And I've got. I got one pretty amazing picture that I have posted as my page banner, which is pretty cool. So I got to hang out with August and and uh, Jimmy, my guitar playing buddies for Dennis DeYoung. And uh, I'll get to see them again in February up here in Maryville, Indiana. So looking forward to that. And that pretty well sums up the trip. If you guys got any questions or the only anything. question I have really is how does your family, I know you guys are repeat visitors, obviously, how do they handle the two, it almost seems like you guys are on two separate vacations when you're there. My, well, sometimes my family is okay with me going off doing my own thing, and other times you're like, why do you keep going off doing your own thing? <laughs> well, my wife's kind of used to that because we kind of do our own thing anyway. Cause she's got what she <laughs> likes to do. I have what I like to do, and we both understand that. So Sounds we go so into familiar to me. We try to meet up for dinners or for lunch if we can, and it, and it's funny because when we go on the cruise, you know, she goes and does what she wants to do, and I go do what I want to do. We sometimes meet up and do uh, mixology class, or we may hang out together at the pool. But you know, she might have a movie she wants to go see that I don't want to see, or. Or, or things like that, even on the cruise. And it's funny. <laughs> There's a funnier part to that is that uh, my friends in Miami, whenever they cruise with us, Wally and Terry, I usually hang out with Terry the whole cruise, and Sean hangs out with Wally the whole cruise. So, 
We have friends like that, too. Yeah, so I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> no, not at all. It, yeah. it's, it's really funny, because, so, like I said, sometimes we are just fine, and we're happier going off doing our own things and accomplishing, you know, what we want to on each of our vacations. And other times, like, why are you running away from us all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not. I'm just doing things I don't think you want to do. So, so two of the things I was really glad I got to do was the, I got to see the uh, uh, First Order March at Hollywood Studios with Captain Phasma. They march from the front of the park to the stage, and that's pretty cool. And I've got video of that I've got to extract. And then they do this uh, show called in a galaxy far, far away. So it's it's basically a stage show, a culmination of basically all seven movies. Uh, the Darth Maul, the guy they have played Darth Maul comes out on the stage, and they have a guy that comes out as the Emperor, and there's a guy that comes out as Darth Vader, and C-3PO and R2-D2, and, and BB-8 comes up out of the stage, and of course they've got every Stormtrooper you could think of there. Uh, so those were two things I was glad I got to do. The one thing, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, <laughs> I just lost it. That's all right. Anyway, any other questions? I don't think so. Yeah. Cool. You were definitely a Milford on the move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I uh, You know, I, I forgot to mention, over five days I walked 51 miles. That's what my Fitbit logged. Wow. Holy cow. 51 miles. So well, that's like two marathons. Chris, Crystal would be proud. That's of right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always forget to check my. I don't have a Fitbit, but I know the iPhone keeps track of all that crap. I just always forget to look at it when, either each day or when I get back from a trip to see what I walked. <clears throat> oh, I know what the thing was. I was trying to think of. There was one sad thing that I didn't get to see. The Muppet Mobile Lab. I never caught that at Epcot. Because they started doing the mobile Muppet Lab again at Epcot with with Beaker and Doctor Honey or uh, yeah. Doctor Bunsen Honeydew, yeah, Doctor Bunsen Honeydew, yeah. So I didn't get to see that, but I did get to see the uh, Muppet thing at Magic Kingdom. That's the other thing I forgot to mention, and I actually did get to see two different shows. So they do do different stuff. So one that I saw was about the Constitution. And the other one was about the ride of Paul Revere. So there are different shows that they do on, and it appears to be different days of the week. So, yeah, I think that was a question that some people had had. So, yeah, I think so too. I, there might be one more. There might be one for the declaration of independence as well. Cause when my parents were there right after you were there and my father periscoped, I think all the ones that they saw, I, I okay. didn't get to watch them all live, but, and I think they definitely saw two different ones, but they might have talked to a cast member, and I think my uncle had said that's how they alternate every, maybe not every day, maybe every other day it's different shows, but, but it does it does alternate. Yeah, and that was pretty cool. I, I was glad I got to see that, so that's pretty much it. All right. Well, very good. Sounds like you had a good time all around, even, even though for the rocky start. Sound like they uh, yeah. they took care of everything. It was good weather the whole time we were there, so you know it was hot. I mean, it was by no means cool. It was eighty five degrees every day, so uh, I think two of the days it got to the nineties. But uh, um, and for everybody scared about the whole Zika virus thing, uh, I will tell you they had they had mosquito repellent in industrial sized pump bottles. All over the park. Yeah, they had those things You could everywhere. walk up and pump some out and smear it all over yourself, I guess. Well, they were doing either or. So. They had the spray, but if you didn't want to use a spray, then, yeah, they had those pumps with, like, a lotion that you can rub on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw those I, when we were there, too. I took my own stuff. <laughs> I didn't bother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those mosquitoes were going to get drunk if they came anywhere near me, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I figured I was safe. <laughs> All right, well, cool, very good. Sounds like you had a good time, and I'm pretty sure Milford, Milford's trip wraps up all our trips for for quite a while. I know Mel's heading down at some point in December, so 
she'll be down there for Christmas time and holiday time, which is always awesome at at any of the mm-hmm. any of the parks. But Milford's are pretty much our last trip report for a while, which many of you may be glad for and many of you may be sad for. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll get on to some other topics in in other episodes leading up to the uh, holidays, and then we'll definitely be getting into some some of the holiday stuff and experiences we've all had down there during that as well. So for now, that's going to wrap up this episode. So we'll give you all our, our social media things. Didn't do our normal beginning where we introduced everybody. Uh, kind of a short cast this week. So we'll start off with the uh, ladies and uh, Adrian. All right. You can find me on my blog at WDWbound.com, on Twitter at WDWbound underscore com, and on Facebook at AdriWDWbound. Excellent. And Melanie? You can find me at dclprepschool.com. That's my website. On Facebook, it's facebook.com slash dclprepschool. And over on Twitter, it's also dclprepschool. Cool. And Milford? You can find me on my Milford on the Move blog, milfordhutzel.com. You can also find me at uh, Milford on the Move on Facebook and Milford on Move on Twitter. Very good. And as for me, RJ, you can find me on Facebook at RJ Lucia Jr. And on the Twitter and Instagram at BlackPearl454. And as for the Diz Explorers podcast, you can head on over to DizExplorers.com and find out all our links to all our social media sites are on there, as well as links for all our troopers and for missing members this week at least. For Duchess Jessica and for our runner extraordinaire Crystal, who I think just runs constantly all the time <laughs> until training for her marathon in, in January. So we'll catch her. We'll catch her one of these nights and <laughs> and hear how she's doing in her preparation and <laughs> what mileage and what pace she's up to this week. So thanks again for listening, everybody, and we will talk to you all later. Mm-hmm.